Okay, we'll go ahead and call the August 4th, 2022 meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Can we call the roll, please? Here. Here. Okay, so we do have a quorum by the skin of our teeth. Um, so we'll move on to approval of the July 7th meeting minutes. And uh, I will note that we do have a quorum from that meeting. So we can actually go ahead and um, act on that. Um, are there any questions, corrections from commissioners on? month's meeting minutes. No, if not, I'll accept a motion. All right. Okay. Yep, you should be good now. Okay, do I have a second? Okay. Uh, moved by Commissioner Jacoby, seconded by Commissioner Goon. All those in favor? Uh, all right. Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Meeting minutes are approved. Uh, next would be report from the chair. Um, we do not have anything in particular to review this evening. Uh, so following that, we'll have communications from HBC staff liaison. Uh, Jennifer, do you have anything for us? Nothing to report. Um, I, I will. I will um, just give you a heads up that I, we do have a couple of applications that we've received for um, various act for a few things requiring commission approval. So um, we will have some action items at upcoming meetings. So I'm not sure if they'll be September or October or one of each, but stay tuned. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for staff? No. Okay. Um, We'll, at this point, open up public invited to be heard uh, for anyone in the audience wish to speak. It sounds like my microphone is on from here. Good evening, Sharon O'Leary, co-chair, Historic East Side Neighborhood. Um, I was putting together the newsletter for our neighborhood and um, started looking at you know what the city says about historic preservation. And then I went to the Historic East Side Architectural Survey page, hopefully to um, you know with many new people moving to Longmont to educate people where they could go and possibly find out if their home has already been surveyed. That's probably the biggest uh, stepping stone if you want to move towards preservation or to find out if your home has the potential to be preserved or not. So um, on that web page, it talked about um, the historic east side architectural surveys began in 2001. And you know why? Because of our neighborhood. So um, we went out and photographed all the homes. We did the 50% um, heavy lifting, and the city worked on um, the grant writing. So 21 years ago, we've not expanded the survey, so that makes me a little bit nervous. So twice, um, Sarah Levinson and myself and Dido Clark applied um, in September for the grants on our own as a neighborhood, and we were denied. And and, and rightfully so, just because we don't know the talk. We didn't know how to talk the talk. You know, and if we had someone guiding us from historic preservation, or if we had someone guiding us from the city, we had done the majority of the heavy lifting that we could have gotten the grant and continued surveying our whole neighborhood. And that's our goal. So what I'd like to do is put out the offer to work with you, because as you read on, on that web page, it says, it is... This goal that the Historic Preservation Commission 
continues to approach the Colorado Historical Society for grants to continue the surveying of historic neighborhoods. I don't think it's been happening. So I'm asking to build a partnership. And whether it's one member or several members or um, someone from the city stepping up again, we will do the initial writing and then someone goes in there and punches the holes and we'll take the pictures of the homes for the area that we want and we submit it. And I think there's one in September. So um, I'm putting out an olive branch and say, let's, let's preserve together. And then on one more note, I'm here, I'm still waiting for a conservation overlay zone on the historic east side neighborhood. And I truly believe that if you wrote a letter of support, that could help elevate, if not escalate, uh, the potential for that happening. Um, when I was on Parks Board, we wrote letters multiple times or got up and talked in front of council. And it made a big difference. But if you just attend your meetings and you don't communicate outside of casual conversation, nothing happens. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Um, seeing no others, we'll go ahead and uh, close the public invited to be heard. Um, I do think we, we should have that on our list for staff to uh, just to just to acknowledge the comment about um, about surveys that that is one of our goals and we do want to make sure that that's happening here so uh, I certainly appreciate Ms. Um, Solari's offer and I think if yeah, I think what we're trying to do is get a grant to get a professional to do those surveys but if there's a uh, you know, to have the support of the neighborhood is, is a useful component. So let's make sure we're reaching out and taking advantage of that. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, new business, it doesn't appear that we have any. Uh, so we'll move to prior business and it sounds like we're gonna have a couple of updates on some Kind of outstanding items, the first of which is the Dickens Barnes Latin property. Um, what's our what's our update on that? Okay, so on the Zlaton property, Dickens Barn, we are um, participating with the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board on Monday evening. Um, they are going to be doing their annual tour of various open space projects, and that particular property is on their list. Um, we've been working with the Parks and Recreation Open Space um, team to kind of come up with a plan, so we continue to work with that property owner. We, I think we're getting pretty darn close to us to a solution that works for everyone. Um, that particular site plan for the proposed development is under review as well, so I'm, I'm the staff planner reviewing that, so has, I get to do the comprehensive holistic approach on that project, so. Um, so it's, it's, I feel like we're making some progress, and um, you know, it's, at this point, it's a negotiation process and also determining what is needed, you know, what, what the expenditures would be to, stabilize the property so it could be used for, say, parks and rec storage type uses as opposed to uh, public occupation uses. So um, we've had our uh, structural engineer take a look at it, and the numbers he came back with, I think we talked about this last month, were um, substantially lower than the worst case scenario presented by the applicant. So um, I feel like we've got, we're, we're making some progress on it. Okay, thanks. And um, so, uh, <clears throat> Glenn reached out to me and let me know about that um, meeting that the Parks and Rec is having, which is Monday, a, re a little bit before 7. We had hoped that we could also get um, uh, Holly Norton, Commissioner Norton, out there because she's got some pr uh, pretty good experience with the um, archaeological aspects of that property. However, it sounds like she's not available. So uh, I, I will put it out. We, we do have space for one more commissioner. Any more than that would cause public hearing, you know, public noticing requirements and so on. So 
if if there's anybody here that wants to show up out there at um, at this Latin property Monday a little before seven, let us know. If not, no big deal. I will be there on behalf of the commission. Yes, um, did you already check with um, Gata and? I have not. No, I can certainly haven't. throw that out there because she yeah. certainly has a lot of right. that kind of experience as well. Yeah. Otherwise, I am available if um, nobody else can make it. I'm just probably the least <laughs> knowledgeable <laughs> of such things. So, um, right, happy to go. We can reach out to Gita. I think Holly mentioned it at one time. We brought it up, and yeah, she knows that survey um, forwards and backwards. So. We can reach out to her. There's not a whole lot of time, but if we don't hear, yeah, we'll we'll touch base with you, Terry. So we're going to be kind of parked out there. They're doing a tour of all their recreation mm -hmm. facilities, so we we have everybody's cell phone number, <laughs> so we can see because they tend to go long. Um, but their their agenda has them out there at about five minutes to seven. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll we'll keep that in mind, and uh, we can reach out to Gita. Okay. Okay. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, we did do a follow-up with um, Gus, the structural engineer, um, to say how should we, should we dig a little deeper on the structural part of it. And he did recommend that we look at um, what kind of found, uh, foundation exists or does not exist by underneath some of the major posts in the barn. Um, so we're going to talk to Public Works of what that would take to kind of unearth around those posts um, to take a look at them. But um, that was really his biggest concern in addition to what you read in the, his report. So, And I think, um, as Jennifer mentioned, I think we can ultimately get to a point where we could find that money in order to make that thing stand. So. A big part of it's going to be kind of convincing Parks and Rec Board. It does come with a, a considerable amount, what I think is pretty uh, important open space there. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be important, the meeting on Monday. Thanks. Uh, questions? Well, uh, I could just offer that I, I do know the history of Mary Dickens fairly well, if that would help, but uh, in de determining this, I don't know how much the historic aspect is important to Parks and Rec and how much is just the open space. Um, but again, if, you, if you'd like to go, Terry, that's fine too. Uh, I have a question. How, how much of the land are we looking at possibly acquiring? Is it just the barn? Uh, there's a fair amount of that parcel that is not usable, including where the sheds are falling down, going down to the creek and whatnot. Is the city going to try to acquire all of that? Do you know, or is it premature to say at this point? Yeah, it's premature. Um, I think at one point they did offer all of it to us, um, but there was some concern about what kind of maintenance mm -hmm. responsibility we take on. So. That hasn't been answered yet. Um, they are interested is if we do take on the barn, we would like frontage. Um, so there is a portion that goes out to Zlatan Drive and that would at a minimum be probably included. Um, but we'll see. Right now they are already agreed to about two and a half acres and this is like another two and a half acres. So um, yeah, it's to be determined. Because, yeah, if you had more space, you'd have more flexibility as far as usage, certainly the barn storage, but if you were ever to expand the open space for more recreation, obviously. Yeah. 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 Right. And there is right. a trail, so it would right. give us more flexibility to, to do something with the trail, right. too. So, okay. Thank you. And a lot of it's in a floodplain, so that's mm -hmm. the other <laughs> fun part. Any other questions? All right, well, thanks for the update, and we'll see what happens on Monday. Um, okay, uh, 8B would be an update on the historic preservation plan and surveys. Unfortunately, Brian wasn't able to make it um, this evening, but uh, Brian and I and Jennifer met with... Um, Jenny Dykeman with History Colorado to talk about the uh, non-competitive grant 
for, um, we specifically asked for a uh, survey help and a survey plan. Um, we got a pretty good positive uh, input from them. Again, it's non-competitive, so um, if we make a good application, uh, we should get it. So that is our goal to move forward on that. Um, the other part of the question was a preservation plan, and uh, Brian provided a number of those to you. I think you liked Lafayette's. Um, I think what would make sense is maybe do that survey plan, and I think that will help point us at what um, the priorities would be. So do we need somebody else to kind of draft what a preservation plan would show? I'd kind of like to wait and see uh, of how much information we get from the survey plan. Uh, but we do, have, um, we do have funding for that as well. So if that's the next step, we could certainly do that. But um, I mean, one of the comments Jenny made to us is she's seen a lot of those. Um, she says they, they tend to all sound the same <laughs> after a while. I think everybody has the same goals and um, puts them into a preservation plan similarly. So um, I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe it's more of a, you know, a historic preservation work plan um, going forward once we know uh, w what the survey plan identifies for us. So um, that's kind of our initial thinking. But I think our goal is to get that application in, and um, it's not time-based, so I think they review it as they get them, um, and they'll certainly give us input on, along the way as well. So. so what do you think a timeline might be? Like, you think we could have it submitted before the next HPC meeting, the request? I think that's possible. Yeah. Um, we were talking about early fall, so, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> That'll be early. That's right about there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that would be great if we can do that. And and yeah. Any other any questions from commissioners about either the survey or historic plan? No. I mean that feels reasonable to me. The, the part of the part of the our desire to do it, the survey plan was to to get a sense of all of the areas in town. You know the. The, the gaps in the areas that we're familiar with, but also getting a sense of these outskirt areas like this Latin property that might be overlooked and really get a comprehensive notion of everything in the city limits that could uh, benefit from that attention. So mm -hmm. I, you know, it makes <coughs> sense that that would sort of flow into an, a, a skeleton outline of how a preservation plan would get put together. Yeah. Yeah, and just um, kind of discussing among staff, I guess we were thinking, well, maybe focus in the original town site and the existing historic districts, but maybe more of a, like maybe, uh, I tend to call them like a windshield survey outside the whole community. So if they see some um, something pops out and they say, then maybe dig into those a little bit um, in a little bit more detail so we get a good comprehensive view not only potential districts, but um, yeah, uh, new landmarks. Great, all right, thank you. Uh, so then last update would be a status of, whoops, sorry. Oh. I never say anything, so that's not your fault. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to remind you that the historic East Side neighborhood Association, a youth association, would be there to help as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, all these little barns on the outlying districts between here and I Beam, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't see that crop up here. It kind of bur half buries it in here. So just just wave at me. <laughs> it's a um, tough system, even for just four of us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, okay, so then uh, HPC code amendments. So where where are we at with, with those? I'm okay. kind of hoping we are getting those here to review sooner than later. Right, yes. Now, next step is council has um, scheduled just recently a joint meeting with uh, Historic Preservation. Hopefully, you can be there. <laughs> I, it's August 16th. 
it's a pre-meeting before the regular city council meeting, or maybe it's a work session. Um, it starts at 5.30. Um, uh, the pre-meeting will be in the same room that we did the exec meeting, so you can all be sitting at the table, um, you know, looking eye to eye. It's a little bit better perspective. And um, in realizing that we've both had, I mean, with the council's had an executive session and the Historic Preservation Commission's had an executive session, and you're still bound by the confidentiality of what we discussed there. I think um, what I was hoping this evening, maybe take a step back because the timing for me has been a little odd in that I kind of came in halfway, we lost Jade, and um, I was kind of a, a, a real red line draft was kind of dropped in my lap and it maybe spun a little bit out of control. So um, I think if, if it would really be helpful for me is if you can maybe take a step back and say, what were your really true goals of when you started this process? What were those burning issues um, to make sure we don't lose that in, in all the other smoke and haze um, that's going on? So, and hopefully we kind of use that as a, a guide with the city council and then they'll ultimately give us all direction, I guess, of where they want it to go. So I thought that might be helpful this evening is, um, as far as go back in your memory, what were the, the real concerns with the current code and, um, and, and maybe keep the, we'll keep those kind of in the forefront. Sure, thanks. Um, I, I can tell you, because I've been on this commission long enough, that I know the, the initial um, impetus was in part a response to, uh, and I think it was a 90s era uh, move where all of the review for demolition permits got pulled out of the, the HPC by a city council who didn't want to have any of that um, in it, outside of their purview. Um, so there's, there's a lot of politics around that uh, particular move. And, and Brian's real up to speed on that. I think he's the one who kind of gave us the whole outline. Mm -hmm. um, so, so some of that was just trying to bring the process back into um, to this commission, which seemed like it made sense <laughs> for demolition permits in... Um, historic neighborhoods and, and mm. landmarks to be to be brought in. And, and then there's some more subtleties there about um, you know how much how much purview we have, right? And I think some of those were discussed at that executive session. Right. Right. That that, that was that was a big piece, right? Okay. Just trying to get a review of any property that um, might be uh, have historic value to have some mechanism to bring that in front of this commission in order to have a, another step of, mm -hmm. to, of protection for said property. Right. That was, that was a big goal. Okay. I'll open it up to any other comments that commissioners might have. And Go ahead, Commissioner. It, it actually started before my time as well. So when when I arrived, you had the red line. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that that red line version was, in I guess my first term, okay. um, which was sort of you know the whole pre-COVID thing, um, and then we were just we were looking at that, and we were looking at other um, demolition ordinances that other um, cities had. And then trying to suggest that we have a little more teeth in the demolition ordinance. Um, you know, for example, if somebody just go ahead and and demolishes without, you know, any kind of permission, the 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 penalties for that here currently are pretty mild. They're almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And so trying to discourage that from happening. Um, just essentially just really putting in some safeguards as much as we can. Right. Um, and then it, it sort of expanded beyond that into a few other areas that we started thinking about tweaking the 
our code because it just seemed either out of date or not aligned with some of the other cities codes in terms of you know how somebody might um, uh, establish a district mm -hmm. you know if, if, if there were enough people that wanted to to try to make another district in town what 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 that would what that process would look like um, there were some notions about demolition by neglect that's you know that's probably another thing and we've seen mm -hmm. that right in potentially in this is Latin property about well you know somebody comes in and says well you know the property's falling apart well you've owned it for 20 years and you haven't maintained it and so that's not really a, a mechanism for getting around the demolition ordinance right, right. really a high focus on trying to preserve the historic properties that we have and put some safeguards in I mean I think that's definitely the by far the overarching okay that's goal number one one a one B yeah <laughs> You know, and there's some other stuff that happens right. after that. All right. I did sense that through <laughs> our discussions. <laughs> but um, I do realize that um, we had that red line draft, um, and then we turned it over to our attorney, and we never really came back to you with it. And uh, I think um, Terry was explained to me. So we never really had a, a chance of saying, um, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense. So... Yeah, it's probably my fault that uh, we didn't come back to you to kind of distill it down to what those big issues are. But hope to do that here real soon, <laughs> next couple of weeks. Yeah, and I know there have been hiccups with just town attorneys and, how, you know, yep. there, there have been a number of hiccups along the way to get here. But, yeah, yeah. that's – I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was of – even reasonably high importance in there. I, I think that's really, those are the big big pieces, right? Okay. And there, I, the rest of it, I think, was just sort of clean up. Right? Uh -huh. Housekeeping While we're in there. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Um, and we'll definitely get the word out to the commissioners who aren't here. But um, that's Tuesday night, August 16th, 530, in the, uh, the room where we met in exec. So... It is open to the public. We can't fit all the public in there, but uh, they do um, set up, um, they turn these monitors on so people can sit and watch. Um, but it's typically like a work session, so they won't take questions from the public. It's just amongst you. So. Okay, great. All right, excellent. Wonderful, thank you. Any other questions uh, about that? or? All right. And then from there, I, I hope to start bringing forward red lines and, um, yeah, and get it moving along. Okay. Great. Excellent. Okay. Well, the, that moves us to comments from HPC commissioners. Anyone like to make a – no? Okay. Um, we'll close that out. Comments from City Council Representative uh, – Councilman Rodriguez is not with us tonight. So it moves us to adjournment, but unfortunately we did not get the sub half hour. Sorry oh. to everyone. Yeah. We, we started at 5 <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. All right, moved. By Commissioner Goon and seconded by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. We are adjourned. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks to staff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on this. Well, see some of you on Monday and others uh, on the 16th. Excellent. Thank you.